Welcome to Hanover College Student Spotlight. I'm your host, Peyton Head. One in 20 Americans are misdiagnosed every year. Parents think nothing of it when their kid is diagnosed with a cold or the chicken pox. But what if it was more than just that and you had no idea? Joining me today are two Hanover students both experienced misdiagnosis, Kenny Carpenter and Kaylee Scudder. Thank you all for joining me today. Thanks for having us, Peyton. Well, Kenny, at first the doctors misdiagnosed you with tendonitis in both your knees and also a high ankle sprain. Obviously, it was much more than this. How did you feel when you realized this was incorrect? Um, well, I was definitely scared. They, they had told me it was tendonitis in both knees and an ankle sprain, like you said, which those aren't supposed to get worse. So when my condition continued to worsen, me and my mother both began to worry and she just rushed me to urgent care. Okay. And then McKaylee, um, you experienced a similar situation. You traveled all the way to Louisville, Kentucky uh, to be dis misdiagnosed with kidney failure. Uh, why were you so unsatisfied with this diagnosis? So up until this point, I was experiencing like extreme weakness pretty much from the knees down. And I wasn't experiencing any pain, but it was like enough weakness so that you could like tell just by watching me walk that something was wrong. So when we traveled to Louisville, my mom and I, um, and they had diagnosed me with kidney failure, we talked about it and both felt because of what my body was experiencing that we should get a second opinion. Yeah, and then so then after you were misdiagnosed, you went to King's Daughters Hospital where you, where you received a spinal tap and discovered that you actually had Guillain-Barre syndrome. This is an autoimmune disease where your immune system actually attacks your outer layer of your nerves. What, what were your first thoughts when you heard this diagnosis? So right off the bat, I knew that it was something serious because when my neurologist came into my hospital room to diagnose me, there was like six or seven doctors with him and they were quiet. So I was just kind of like, okay, you know. So then he, my neurologist says, yeah, um, we got the results back and you are, like we're diagnosing you with Guillain-Barre syndrome. First thought was, what the heck is that? I mean, yeah. I'd never heard of it before. And I also didn't realize how serious it was. I mean, within an hour of being diagnosed, I was um, given an IV and uh, started treatments called IVIG. It's when like they pump donated plasma into my body. Um, so, yeah. Oh boy. And then so Kenny, your tendonitis and high ankle sprain actually turned into a severe staph infection. Mm -hmm. And you were 13 years old at the time. I mean, I can only imagine what's going on in your head. So what was going on in your mind? Um, I mean, I didn't really know the severity of it until I had woke up from the coma. But just as a 13 year old, I was terrified. I didn't know if I was gonna live, die. It was, everything was just kind of going around and it was scary. Yeah. And so now, McKaylee, our team discovered on the National Institute of Neurological Disorders and Stroke that some of the symptoms of Guillain-Barre syndrome are coordination problems, pricking pin sensations in hands and feet, abnormal heart rate and blood pressure. Did you experience any of this? Yeah, so like I said earlier, um, up until the point where I traveled to Louisville, um, my I couldn't physically jump off the ground and or like walk on my toes. Um, so the coordination problem was definitely an issue. I kind of walked like I just had no control of my body, but I obviously had no idea what it was at first. Um, and then I still, to this day, um, deal with the pringling um, sensation in my feet. But besides that, um, my um, disease actually progressed into um, complete paralysis from the waist down for about six and a half months. So that was yeah, tough. <laughs> must have been tough, I guarantee it. Yeah. So then Kenny, most staph infections result from cuts on the skin that get infected uh, by bacteria mm -hmm. and usually called dis cause uh, discoloration and boils. However, with misdiagnosis, uh, how, how was this different for you? Um, yeah, since I was misdiagnosed, I actually had a very unique case. So they gave me an ankle wrap for my ankle because that's where, they, for the high ankle sprain. So that forced the infection to go inside my body instead of bubbling outside, which caused it to just be able to go to my knees and eventually my arm and just all my upper body. And then so the staph, as you said, spread throughout the entire, your entire body, which led the doctors to placing you into a medical induced coma. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously you don't remember much from that experience, but that must have had a 
huge impact on your family. Do you have any idea how they felt during this experience? Yeah, um, what I always tell people when I'm telling this story is I had the easiest part of it. Uh, I can't imagine what my mom, my dad, and my family were going through. I've talked to them about it and they just said, the only thing they can really explain is just the worst feeling in your life, having your child maybe being about to die. And just, it's tough on them. Yep, yes it is. And then so McKaylee, uh, you mentioned earlier you experienced paralysis and this went on for about six and a half months. At times you must have felt like giving up and it had to have been extremely challenging. Uh, what steps did you take to get back to walking again? So prior to being do diagnosed with Guillain-Barre syndrome, I had um, tore my ACL. So I was familiar with physical therapy. Um, so I actually rehabbed at the King's Daughters Hospital Rehab Facilitation here in Madison. Um, I went three times a week for about an hour and a half. Um, some days I could go over, but so I pretty much started out with, I mean, minor things um, like sitting with my arms out and trying to keep resistance, um, you know, just strength, keep my upper body um, as strong as I could. And from that point on, I kind of then learned how to crawl. Um, which was a big step, and then on to um, just standing with a walker a couple minutes a day. Um, I also become very fatigued easily. I remember one time I was trying to put my socks on because my mom had to do it, and I was determined, and by the time I got the second sock on, I was just out of breath, and it, yeah. So, um, started with baby steps, but it was worth it. <laughs> well, I guarantee it. And then, so back to you, Kenny, after being in a coma for two weeks and 11 surgeries later, you got to start rehabbing yourself. Uh, how was this process? Um, it was tough. For the first few months, I, was, I stayed in the hospital for three months after all the surgeries, and basically that whole time they taught me, how, they re -taught me how to walk. I, could, I couldn't do it at all. I would rehab every day for about two hours, and then after I got out of the hospital, I had physical therapy every day for about an hour. And I actually kind of built a relationship with my physical therapist, which really helped me, motivated me, and yeah. just kind of helped me get back to where I am now. All right, and then one last question for both of you. Uh, I'm going to ask McKaylee first, is there any chance of this disease coming back? So Guillain-Barre syndrome is super rare, like one in every 100,000, so I got lucky. But um, however, the chances of it coming back are less than 6%, so that's good. But um, traumatic things to your body can um, offset it. Like I can no longer get any more vaccinations or um, like if I plan on having children in the future, I have to have um, checkups with my neurologist just, just to be safe. So mm -hmm. not a big chance, but I take precautions. Yep. And then Kenny? Um, I actually have just about the same as chance as anybody else. If I get a cut, it gets infected, then I could get it. So just like anybody else, really. Okay. Well, uh, thank you, Kenny and McKaylee, for sharing your inspiring stories. Uh, for more information about the disease, please uh, visit the National Institute of Neurological Disorders and Stroke. Thank you, and we'll see you next time. I'm your host, Peyton Head.